Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Pocketnow.com. We just got a hold of Windows Phone 7 build 6176 for the Windows Phone 7 emulator. There's a lot of new stuff to talk about, so let's get to it. Okay, so if you remember the last emulator image, there was no phone, but finally there is a phone. So let's take a look at what it looks like. You're going to notice the emulator is a little choppy at times, and I've found that sometimes it's choppy and sometimes it's fast. It's just, I guess, the time of day. So here we are on the phone. We can bring up the dial pad and make a simple call. You can hear the dial tone. I'm going to press call. And we are connected. Now, what's kind of interesting about how Microsoft did the phone is that the dialer is actually an overlay. And let me show you an example. If I go back to the start screen, we get this iPhone-like notification at the top. If I go into another application like Calendar, the notification stays. And if we click on it, it gives us a little drop down with a little bit of transparency in the background, which is kind of cool. So you can still see what you're doing and not totally interrupt um, the task that you've got at hand. We can open up the dialer through this button, or we can bring up the in-phone options by tapping here. We can go on speakerphone, Bluetooth hold, add a call, and that sort of thing. So just a neat way, I think, that Microsoft implemented the phone within Windows Phone 7 series. So let's back, let's bounce back into the phone. I'm going to go into my phone book. I've only got one contact that I've added here. It's Dudette. I'm going to tap on Dudette, and uh, her phone numbers should come up. Okay, there they are. You can call Dudet right from this screen. Or you should be able to use Quick Dial, actually. So I'm going to go back to the previous screen and whoops, and click on Phone again and go into the dialer. Let's see if I can do Quick Dial. D-U-D. -D. It's not implemented yet, but I'm sure that it will be um, come prime time. So let's go back to the Start screen. Now, a few things to notice on the start screen. Um, new is a, an interesting animation when you click and drag around tiles. So watch. I'm going to move around messaging. And before, you got this kind of very orderly-like movement of the other blocks, the non-active blocks. But look, look what happens. They sort of bend and twist as you move uh, messaging around. So kind of an interesting little animation. And the broken heart icon, which implies that you're going to take it off your start screen, has changed to just a... Uh, a thumbtack with a little line through it. So I'm going to close that. And here we are back on the start screen. Now something else that's new for the start screen is through this emulator version, you can add contacts. So let's see if I can remember how to do that. So I'm going to go into Dudet. Oh, there it is. I, I tapped and hold, held on it. I'm going to click pin to start. And Dudet should show up somewhere. Here it is, down here. And what's kind of cool about Dudet is that you get a little, little animation, um, a little peak animation. So you can see this is their caller ID picture, and it kind of bounces up and down. Kind of a cool little, little feature there. OK, so another thing I want to show you is that if we swipe to the left and go into our program list, now if you tap and hold on any of these, you get a, little, a couple of options. Um, three of them right now are not active for this particular one because it's a stock program. But if we go to another app, say OneNote, maybe it'll work here. Maybe not. Um, you can rate and review, uninstall, or pin to start. So I'm going to pin OneNote to the start screen. And there it is down here. And it, it adds to the list of things that you want to see on a regular basis. OK, so there's a few other things I want to show you. Um, first of all, we can go into email setup. This has been cleaned up a little bit. So we can add Facebook and Outlook and Windows Live. I've tried adding a variety of accounts. It still won't synchronize, which is a shame, because we really can't get a full sense for the email experience. And, and the contacts experience and the calendar experience until we can synchronize it with these services. So hopefully in a future version that will be working. Okay, let me show you um, Zoom because there's a new thing there. Obviously we can't synchronize with the Zoom service because it's not really a connected emulator, although internet does work, uh, oddly. We can go into radio, this, this is kind of funny. One of the stations actually works. Um, let's see if we can get it, here it is. So kind of, kind of funny. No other stations at all. Oh, there's some other stations here. KWSO, perhaps that's some internet streaming service. So let's go back to the previous screen. Let's bounce into the new Office application. When we saw Office in the last version of the emulator, it was horrible. It just didn't make sense. But it's, we're starting to see how Office is going to be an awesome experience in Windows Phone 7. So let's bring it up here. We're taken into the Office Hub, which is sort of a place for all things Office. We can 
mess around with OneNote. OneNote really hasn't changed. You can make a note. You can um, add a voice recording to it. Kind of basic stuff. And if we click on all, it takes you to it takes you to a screen that wants you to personalize your copy of Office. So I'm going to type my name here, just for good measure. Click OK, and it takes you into your notebooks. Let's go to the previous screen. We'll swipe to the right through the Metro interface. And we can go to the SharePoint screen where we can see our uh, the documents on our company server. If you work for a company that has SharePoint, SharePoint, or we can go into a new document for Word, Excel, or PowerPoint. So I'm going to jump into Word and show you really the new features here. So here is some information about um, about the new version of Word, changing changing the text color and the size and the quick styles and just a really cool tutorial that walks you through how you can actually use the program to make real documents on your device, which is something that we really haven't seen in previous versions of Office for Windows Mobile. So I'm going to hit on the pen here. So I'm going to go down here to the application bar. I'm going to open up a new document. And as you could have seen just a minute ago, there was there were a waiting cursor, a, a waiting cursor right at the top, three little dots that go across. I'll show you that again in a minute. So I'm going to type on my keyboard. I haven't figured out copy and paste on here yet. I don't think it's implemented, but we can double tap a word to highlight, bring up the little A um, button down here and change the font color. OK, so that's new. That's pretty basic stuff, but very, very necessary. We can also change it to underline. What's kind of annoying is that every time you click on a new style, it exits out of that screen. Hopefully, that screen will stay on until you have it close. OK, so another thing we can do, which is very, very cool, is annotations right within the document. So this is going to be very handy. One of your coworkers or your friends or colleagues sends you a document with markup on it. And you look through it and you say, OK, I don't like this word. So you go down here to an annotation and say, this word is bad. OK? Um, and then you can click off of it, and it will save the annotation so that next time I click on it, it says Brandon, that's me, said this word is bad. Very handy. It keeps track of annotations in a way that we really haven't seen before in a mobile office application. Clicking on this button uh, that I just clicked on there shows you the currently open document. So it's kind of like your document tray. We can go back in here. We can send off this document through email right from the Office application. So you don't have to go into email and add the attachment. It's all done right here. Or you can save it. So I'm going to save it as, hello, this is a test. I'm going to go back to the Office Hub. And here we are, hello, this is a test, is saved. Let's jump back in one more time to the Word uh, application to see if there's anything that I missed. So you can search for certain things. Um, we can also open documents, as I mentioned, and save as just as you would in regular Office. So pretty robust. It's really looking like Office on uh, Windows Phone 7 series is going to be awesome. Let's jump into Excel real quick. Some changes have been made here. Here's a really cool looking sample workbook. And panning is a little choppy right now because it's an emulator. Um, but we can tap on a chart, and we should be able to zoom in if you double tap. Um, you should be able to edit it. Haven't really experimented much with this. See the options that we get. So we can format cell, save, send, save as. So stuff you would get on the desktop. We can also look at annotations or add our own annotations, just like you could in Word. Just trying to see if there's a way to edit this chart. Um, this is a sample workbook. I'm going to make a new one real quick. Looks like you can't make a new one. Oh, here's some uh, interesting looking sheets. This is the application chart. This is the, um, the currently stored documents on this emulator. So likelihood to pay. OK, so here is another um, sample spreadsheet. And it has a little. I wonder what this means. It has a little speech bubble here. I think this means that there are annotations. There we go, right here. Some blue annotations that shows what Anna has said about this particular document. Really cool stuff. Finally, let's go into PowerPoint, see what that looks like. So here's a sample PowerPoint presentation. You can swipe. You should be able to uh, add a new page. So let's see what happens with this. This is obviously not a final button down here. So I just added the word test. I think I added an annotation, but I can't really be sure. Um, so here are the two saved documents. I can very quickly cycle between them. It's going to be really handy. From here, it looks like we can email, add annotations. And it's not really clear how this works. This program is probably the least complete 
of, of all the Office programs. So it has some work to go. Let's go back to the start screen, see if there's anything else that we wanted to talk about here. Let me show you something in Xbox Live to show you that waiting cursor I mentioned. So look at the top of the screen. This is what it's going to look like when the system is thinking. It's a kind of good way to get it out of the way. Uh, and you can actually use the application while it's thinking. Whereas in Windows Mobile, when you got the waiting cursor, you really couldn't do much on the screen. It really froze uh, the current state. So we're gonna continue to look through this new version of the emulator. There's a lot of things in this one. So we saw the phone, we saw the new um, sort of physics engine behind the home screen. We saw that the way that you can quickly add shortcuts from your home screen or rate and review or uninstall program. Then we walk you through Office. There's probably a little bit more. If we find more, we'll be sure to report on it for you. Please give the video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. And that is it for now.